friends, and welcome to a very special online worship service from Shiloh United Methodist Church in Piedmont, South Carolina for November 1st, 2020. The reason this is a special day is that this is All Saints Day, and today we're going to encourage and invite you to remember those persons, both deceased and still living in your life, that have allowed you to see God clearer and to be drawn to the Christian life more dearly. My name is Mike Hammett. I'm the pastor at Shiloh, and I'm assisted in the production and presentation of today's service by our director of music ministries and pianist, David Watson. All Saints Day is a day for remembering. The word saint simply means holy. And in the New Testament, all those who believe and were baptized were referred to as saints. It wasn't until around the third century that the church began using the word saint to refer to those who had been martyred for the faith. Over time, these martyred saints were held up for veneration and people used to pray to them to intercede on their behalf. Now, it's not germane for us today to go into all of the institutional abuses that led the great reformer Martin Luther and his later reformers to abolish the veneration of the saints. Just understand that while the Reformation put an end to the veneration of saints in the Protestant churches, it did not abolish the concept of sainthood, being holy. So within our mainline Protestant churches, of which Methodism is counted as one, we use the term saint in much the same way as it was used in the New Testament to describe the faithful. We talk about the communion of the saints to describe all the faithful who have gone before us, who now rest in God, together with all the living who walk in faith. So today, as we celebrate the saints, we give thanks for all the faithful, those living and those who have gone before us. And now I invite us to listen as we hear Come Christians Join to Sing.
Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your holy saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to a time in this service when I want to invite you to join with me in remembering the saints who have touched your life, holy men and women, men and women who have helped you to be a better person, a better Christian. Some of the poetry of John Donne applies so well to this time. He wrote, no person is an island entire of itself. Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. And so now I invite you to think about those persons in your life who may have made a difference. I am lighting a votive candle here in our studio because this light shining forth is going to remind me today of the presence of the light of Christ that was shown through those persons, both with us and now in the church triumphant, who have made a difference in my life and in your life. And so now with thanksgiving, we remember. And I invite you now to think of those persons whom you would remember. I remember Corps Sergeant Major Floyd Malden. I remember the Reverend Brother Jimmy Piles. I remember Chaplain Brigadier General Paul Durbin, United States Army Reserve. As you remember and celebrate, hear again words from the poet John Donne. Each person's death diminishes me, for I am involved in humankind. Therefore, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for you. Death, be not proud, Though some have called you mighty and dreadful, yet you are not so. For those whom you think you can overthrow die not, poor death, nor yet can you kill me. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, you will die. And so today, I encourage each and every one of us to remember and rejoice as we give thanks to God for the great cloud of witnesses who have been a blessing for us, who have revealed God's love to us, who have taught us God's holy word of truth, who have loved us, nourished us, challenged us, and inspired us to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So who are the saints in your life? Think about those saints who revealed God's love to you. 
Remember and rejoice, for by their love they taught you God's word and taught you to celebrate God's grace. Remember and rejoice in the saints of God who are responsible for having passed the gifts of faith on to each of us. These are saints whom you may never read about in the church history books, but saints who by their life and witness managed to reveal a measure of God's amazing grace to the world. These saints of God who are so dear to us and so precious to God are just ordinary folks who in the course of seeking to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, in striving to love God with all their heart, soul, and mind, ended up touching my life and your life in ways that changed us and had a profound effect on who we are today. So today is a day for remembering and rejoicing in the communion of saints. Today is a day for giving thanks to God for their lives and for the witnesses that they have been and are in our lives. But today is also a day for looking around us to discover our own place in the communion of the saints. Think about it for a moment. Think about how people will remember and give thanks for you, for your holiness, for your Christianity, for your sainthood. Whose faith have you nourished? Whose faith will you nourish? How will you nourish people in the faith? I guess it boils down to a question, what role are you prepared to play in the communion of the saints? Would you pray with me? We give you thanks, O God, for all the saints who ever worshiped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses, where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands lifted as worship and praise offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hard-working saints, whether hard-hatted and steel-booted, head-ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited. They left their mark on this world for you, for us, and for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Amen. So our first reading from Holy Scripture today is Psalm 34. We're reading the first 10 verses and then jumping down to the last verse, verse 22. I share this psalm with you today because I believe it reminds us of part of the experience of these saints as they walked upon the earth. This is a psalm attributed to David. He writes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Allow me to pause here at this point. This is a call for us to be a people of praise, blessing the Lord. That means giving him our thanks, praising the Lord continually, never, ever not praising God, always acknowledging God's presence in our lives and what God has done in our life making boast in the Lord. In other words, not boasting in our own achievements, but always knowing that God has blessed us. It's kind of like the saying that I will use a lot, and that is that I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. I don't really believe in luck, but I do believe in God's blessings. Let the humble hear and be glad. When we are humble, God can use us and work with us. And David says to magnify the Lord with me. I love that. It's the idea of making the Lord larger, 
like, like looking through a magnifying glass, blowing the Lord up so that the Lord is visible in our world. And the Lord is visible in our world through the work of God's people and God's churches. And let us exalt his name together. Exaltation, praise, giving glory. So it's a full circle of blessing, praising, boasting, magnifying, exalting. We are called to be a people of praise. But let me ask you a question. Why does David want to be a person of praise? And why does David think we should be people of praise? Well, listen now to verses 4 through 10. You'll hear the answer. Out of his personal experience, David says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Let's pause there, even though we have one verse remaining, verse 22, but let's listen, let's look at this for a moment. So we're called to be a people of praise, deep praise, great praise. Why? Because when we call upon the Lord, he answers us. David was in a time of fear several different times in his life. This is a response to one of those times. He says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from my fears. I cried out, God heard me and I was saved. David, as a ruler, would have a host, his army, his legion, camped around him to protect him at all times. But this comes from a time when David was a younger man. This comes from a time after the time that David slew the giant Goliath, but he was not yet the king of the nation of Israel. And in a time when he thought he was all alone and there was nobody looking out for him and nobody to help him, he says, the angel of the Lord encamps around me and delivers me. So in our times of need, we have an army of angels who are there for us. Now, being from South Louisiana, where food is spoken of all the time, thought about all the time, as soon as you finish breakfast, you're thinking about lunch. As soon as you finish lunch, you're thinking about dinner. As soon as you go to bed, you're thinking about, what am I gonna have for breakfast the next morning? Food's a major thing in South Louisiana. And there's some excellent cuisine there, some wonderful cooks. I love the, the language, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just today, it's in the afternoon, late afternoon, when we're recording this online service. And I was at our home having lunch with my wife earlier today. And we were having some leftovers, but it was a wonderful soup that she had made. And it was just as tasty today as it was when she first made it. She's become just masterful at being able to put in the right kinds of seasonings and, and, and condiments to just blend well and bring out great flavor. And, and God's that way. God is masterful at bringing out the very best in us and making this world a delectable, delightful, delicious experience for us. For happy are those who take refuge in God. And then we're invited to fear the Lord, which I, I always try to tell everyone, fear doesn't mean fear and trembling like at a Halloween show. Fear means respect, awe, worship. And when we respect and worship God, we have no want. So verse 22 in this Psalm kind of gives us the fact. Have you ever heard the saying, that's a fact, Jack? Well, here's your fact. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. My friends, I fully believe 
that those whom I have remembered as saints, those whom you have remembered as saints, had experienced this fact that when they would take refuge in God, the Lord redeemed them and did not condemn them, but blessed them in many ways. And it was that faithfulness and that assurance that allowed them to live those holy lives that caused them to be saints to you and to me. How are we gonna be saints to the next generation? How are we going to be the saints to the people around us right now and our children and grandchildren? It's when we also seek to live this same way. Bless the Lord, praise the Lord, magnify the Lord, boast in the Lord, exalt in the Lord. Always seek to see that he is good. Taste his joy. Experience his grace. Experience the redeeming of our life. I hope these thoughts will give you some comfort and some food for thinking as we hear the wonderful hymn for all the saints. Our second reading from Holy Scripture comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I, and the I refers to John the Revelator, the author of the book who was receiving the vision and revelation which is recorded here. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, 
Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. May God bless this reading of God's holy word. So I want you to think with me about the question, what makes a saint? So one day, a man was walking through a beautiful church building with his four-year-old son. And as they walked, the young boy was looking around and he stopped and was curious about the stained glass windows that looked so beautiful with their bright colors. And as he looked at the windows, he asked, who are all the people in the windows, daddy? There are the saints, said the father. Well, what are saints, daddy, the kid asked. Well, the father was a little bit dumbstruck. How was he going to explain who saints were to a four-year-old boy? And as the boy was still looking up at the windows, and the father was still wondering how he was going to explain this, the young boy shouted out, I know who saints are, Daddy. They are the people that the light shines through. Quite often, we think of saints in the same way we may think of angels or some of the very, very well-known people such as St. Francis or uh, Mother Teresa. But in the Bible, you remember a saint is simply a follower of Jesus Christ. They became saints by being born again by the Holy Spirit, which can happen through God to any one of us. Now, but the people described as saints in the Bible were still very much human. They were called, they were holy, they were extremely dedicated in terms of their attitude and a sense of being set apart in God's service, but they were still real people, far from perfect. They were fishermen, farmers, tent makers, doctors, teachers, carpenters, former prostitutes, extortionists, outcasts, robbers, you name it. They weren't infallible and sometimes they disagreed with one another. They were not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but they were on a journey, the journey of following Jesus, the journey of learning to be more and more like Jesus, which means becoming more loving, less judgmental, more accepting of others, and less condemning of others. As far as the Bible is concerned, Jesus is perfect, but Jesus' people, well, they were and are not perfect. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, now we see a reflection in a mirror, then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way that I have been completely known. Just think of all the mistakes the Apostle Peter made, or John, or James, but they learned as they went. They learned from their mistakes. They learned by allowing Christ to forgive them, by accepting Christ's forgiveness and moving on in Christ in love. All the words in both Greek and Hebrew that are used in the Bible and are translated into the word saint all have the same definition. According to the Bible, a saint is someone who is sacred, holy, pure, blameless, dedicated. Now the word holy doesn't mean perfect. It means set apart, set apart to serve God and to be dedicated. A saint is dedicated. A saint may fall down, but a saint gets back up again. A saint may fall into sin, lose their temper, hurt another one by word or deed, but a saint asks God for forgiveness, accepts that forgiveness, and asks God for the strength to grow in love. That's what it means to be dedicated. A dedicated follower of Jesus Christ may not always love their enemies, but that's their goal. 
When they find they cannot love their enemies, they ask God for God's love to overcome their anger and hatred. When they find it difficult to pray for someone who's mistreated them, a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ prays for that person anyway. If a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ finds it nearly impossible not to judge another person, then they admit this failure to God and ask God to enable them not to judge. They pray to God to help them to love all persons, no matter who that person is, what they look like, or how they live their lives. And because dedicated followers of Jesus Christ are called to turn the other cheek, and if someone takes their coat, they are to give them their shirt as well, they are to pray to God that they don't demand special rights and privileges from the world and from other people. They are not to take others to court, blast other people in the media, or anywhere else. Now, there can be no doubt that this kind of living, this kind of lifestyle we are called to is radical as it can possibly get. And none of us are gonna get it completely right. If we even begin to think we're getting it right, then we're already getting it wrong. Remember it says, all who exalt themselves will be humbled. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And that good favorite pride comes before a fall. So what are we to make of all this? Jesus just turns things upside down and inside out again and again. Could it be that part of what it comes down to is that a, a secure financial future and a full stomach are not necessarily bad things in themselves, but they can be deceptive. They are temporary. And rather than being evidence of God's favor, prosperity can actually get in the way of our relationship with God and with other people. It can steal our love. To be truly happy or blessed is to have a relationship with God that is not in jeopardy. Self-sufficiency traps us and separates us from God. Those that lay up treasures for themselves are not and cannot be rich toward God. We are blessed and happy when we rely solely on the mercy and love of God from whom all blessings flow. True happiness comes when we rely exclusively on God. And when we rely exclusively on God, we find that we are more loving, more compassionate, less judgmental. And when we love Christ more, we love others the best. Those are all characteristics of those we call saints. Those are all characteristics of those of us who aspire to be called saints. A saint is someone whose life makes it easier to believe in God. All of us have known such people. Most of us were given our first glimpse of Jesus through one of Jesus' saints. Maybe it was your mom or dad. Maybe it was a neighbor, a school teacher, or a friend. Maybe it was a pastor or a member of a church fellowship you were raised in or a Sunday school teacher. Whoever it was, there was something about them, something that separated them from the rest of the crowd something special about them that intrigued us and caused us to want to have that something special as well. They were the people who would go the extra mile. They were the people that we knew we could count on no matter what. They were the people who made us feel loved, who gave us just a glimpse of the divine. I had some of those dear special people in my life Salvation Army Corps Sergeant Major Floyd Malden, who took a young man who was in college, undergraduate, and then graduate school, and helped me to learn what it meant to serve others in Christ. To not just have faith, but to share faith. And not just in words, but in deeds. As I was able to get involved and work within a local Salvation Army Corps in my hometown, where also I went to college. And there was the Reverend Jimmy Piles, Brother Jimmy, as he was often called. Brother Jimmy was an elder statesman in the Louisiana Conference of the Methodist Church, where I served up until 2015 when I came to South Carolina. Brother Jimmy introduced me to a world beyond just the local church and even just our annual conference. Through Brother Jimmy, I became involved in the United Christian Ashram Movement and was able to work as, as uh, an attendee and on staff 
for those beautiful uh, multi-day retreats that are done uh, in the spirit of, a, of, a, of an Indian ashram where you go and you sit under teachings and you, you do things together to learn and grow and develop your faith. And I also was involved with a wonderful thing that Methodists used to do in the Methodist Church, we don't anymore, the yearly Congress on Evangelism. And that was the first time I ever came to South Carolina. I came to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but in the beginning of January, this event always started on January 2nd of every year. It was a cold winter in Myrtle Beach that year. I remember that. Uh, Kind of like the cold of that first week I was in here in 2015 in January. I'd only just now thought about that. That's quite very interesting. But in that Congress on Evangelism, I had the opportunity to meet many leaders of the church today who, like me, were, were young pastors just getting involved at the time. And I had an opportunity to learn a lot about expressing and living out the faith. And then, as many of you know, I was involved in the Air Force as a chaplain and also continue to serve now as the wing chaplain for the South Carolina wing of the United States Air Force Auxiliary called the Civil Air Patrol. One of the people that really taught me a lot about chaplaincy was Paul Durbin, a retired Brigadier General chaplain in the Army Reserve, uh, who was a hospital chaplain in an area that I served in at the time. And uh, I learned so much from him about l being the the visible reminder and presence of the holy in situations where people have needs. I had these individuals who, who helped me to see that they put their full trust in the Lord, gave their complete lives to God in service and dedication, and had experienced more out of life than I could ever imagine. And they passed that fullness of life on to me and helped me to experience that. I hope you've had people like that in your life. These people are the saints, the saints of God. They are the people through whom God's light shines. Who are your saints? Some may still be alive. All three of mine are now deceased. Maybe they're members of the church where you attend. Maybe they have passed on like mine have and this candle was lit to remember them this morning. We are to let Christ's light shine like the light shining through the figures in the stained glass windows that that four-year-old boy saw. So this is your takeaway. This is your one thing I want you to remember if you remember nothing else. Let God's light shine through you. Let God's light shine through you. We are all, every one of us, called to be saints people dedicated to God, so that the light of Christ may shine through our words and our actions. A saint is someone through whom we catch a glimpse of what God is like and of what we are called to be. A saint is not perfect, but we thank God for them because a saint is someone through whom God tells us the incredible story of grace and redemption, salvation, holiness, faith, and life everlasting. Praise God for those saints who are in our lives now and those saints who have blessed us in days past. Amen and amen. I invite you now to join me for a time of prayer let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for the saints who show us your light now and through whom your light has shined in the past. We thank you that their lives have shaped us and meant so much for us. Help us to honor their lives and their memories by also letting your light shine through us so that others may see. Bless, we pray, those in our midst who are sick, grieving, troubled. May you hold them in your hands, cover them with your grace, touch them with your spirit, 
bring healing and wholeness and comfort and strength in their times of need. And O oh Lord, we give you thanks. As we pray together, the prayer that Jesus taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now listen once again as music helps to carry us before the throne of God's grace. As this service comes to a close, I extinguish the candle that was lit earlier to remind us of the light of Christ shining through the saints who have been in our lives living and gone on to the church triumphant. The light of Christ, which we should allow to shine through us. And as you do that, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless and be with you. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>